Luckily, the human mind and body are far more flexible, durable, and creative than ever given credit for. Many cases, like Augustus's, never come to light. The individuals involved cure themselves. Sometimes this is done when such a person chooses to undergo a traumatic experience. Often, one part of the personality will plan this quite deliberately while the other portion closes its eyes. These events can seem to be disasters or near disasters, and yet they can sufficiently mobilize the entire personality for survival's sake. In a moment of high critical tension, the personality may put itself together again. Such critical uniting episodes usually do not involve long sickness, though they may, but instead events such as bad accidents. The difficulty may be exteriorized as a broken limb, for example, instead of a broken self. And as the body is repaired, the necessary assimilation of belief takes place. There are various kinds and stages in such cases. Each individual is unique. Sometimes the framework includes another method of cure in which portions of each conflicting side of the personality break off to form a clearer psychological structure which can communicate with the other two, act as a referee, and reconcile the opposing beliefs held by each. This is done many times without the main personality realizing what is really going on. On occasion, automatic writing is utilized, or the Ouija board. Both are methods to uncover invisible conscious beliefs that are accepted by you consciously at any given time, say, and deliberately ignored at another given time. When people using such methods are told that their writing comes through from a demon or the devil or an evil spirit, then those invisible beliefs are shoved farther away. Any search into the mind becomes frightening and dangerous, since it might lead to further such invasion. Now, such invasion is usually the sudden appearance of previously unacceptable beliefs, quite conscious, but invisible, tucked away. Then they suddenly appear as alien. In most instances, the possession concept makes it all the more upsetting. Easier to face often is the idea that the responsibility for such ideas must belong to another entity or being. In all cases of this nature involving Augustus-type episodes, the problem is one of unassimilated beliefs. Instead of comparatively drastic behavior, however, such beliefs can be expressed through various parts of the body. Unfortunately, a system of medicine that largely deals with symptoms only encourages a patient to project such beliefs on new organs, for instance, after already sacrificing others in operations. The solutions lie in the conscious mind. I cannot emphasize this too strongly. And in those beliefs that you accept about the nature of reality and specifically about the nature of your being. While the most basic work must be done by the individual, help is always available from a variety of sources, both within and without. You will literally interpret and use almost any data that comes to you as helpful and it will be highly effective unless your beliefs lead you to think perhaps that everyone is against you or that you are beyond help or that you do not deserve it. Other such ideas can also close you off from help, of course, but you will instinctively look for it and use it when possible. This marks the end of Seth Speaks. This is chapter six and our part six of the nature of personal Reality. Let's discuss. Seth is conveying the idea that individuals possess a remarkable capacity for self-healing and resilience, often tapping into the unconscious mechanisms to overcome challenges. In this passage, he discusses how traumatic experiences can trigger a reintegration of the personality, leading to healing. 
He also explores the role of unassimilated beliefs in psychological and physical health issues, emphasizing the importance of conscious beliefs in shaping reality. Seth suggests that while individuals must do the primary work, help is available from various sources, and one's beliefs significantly influence their ability to receive and utilize assistance. If you've enjoyed this passage, please consider giving it a like, sharing with a friend, and of course, subscribing for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you won't miss any videos. What did you think about this particular passage? Please leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the four quiz questions that accompany this passage as well as the meditation. Both are intended to help bring us deeper and to what Seth is trying to convey. Until the next time, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I am Tony Victory, a wolf uncaged. Thank you.